the gossip. This is a true story. The names have been changed to protect the innocent and the guilty. Mainly, it's the story of Laura and Jean. Laura and Jean were best friends. They double dated together, they studied together, and often, after school, they went to the corner drugstore together. The drugstore was a favorite hangout. Some of the kids drank Cokes, others read magazines, and they all talked. Talking's lots of fun, except sometimes, when you talk about people, that's when the trouble starts. I saw them together yesterday. Of course, I'm just telling you what I saw and heard, but, well, hell, hi, hi, yes. everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt, but, Laura, don't you and Mary forget the meeting in Mrs. Hoover's oh, office tomorrow okay. afternoon at 3.30. 3.30. What Fine. meeting's this? The pep club, Frida. We've got to nominate people for next year's officers. Who's going to be up for president? Well, the That's names nice. will be posted on the bulletin board Thursday morning, Frida. Oh, sure, but come on now. You must have some idea now of who will be. Nope. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, Bye. Well, who does she think she is, keeping it all to herself? Is friend Jean your candidate for pep club president, Laura? Well, Laura's I... going to put up whoever's most qualified, Frida. Is Jean qualified, Laura? Is she? I'm You'll just... find out Thursday, along with the rest of us. Well, wish I had a friend on the nominating committee. <laughs> you have me, Frida. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I was saying, I saw them together yesterday. Well, Tom said that really there wasn't anything. Laura. Uh-huh. Laura, I've been thinking. Maybe for the next few days, while you're working on the nominating committee, well, maybe we shouldn't see each other quite so much. Are you afraid of what Frida Thompson will say? Well, sometimes people like Frida Thompson can make a lot of people believe what she says. Oh, Jean, don't be silly. Why, no one would dare say that you didn't deserve to be nominated for president. Why, you've worked harder than anyone in the club, and you're dependable, and you make good grades, and... And you're just about the best friend a girl ever had. But, well, let's not give Frida a chance to do any talking. Hmm? Hmm? All right, but I sure hate to have to worry about what people will say. So do I. But you have to sometimes, I guess. And Laura... Uh-huh. If anything ever should come up about one of us, let's ask right out. Get the facts. No jumping to conclusions. Okay, but I'd never jump to conclusions about you. After all, you're my best friend. I know. But sometimes people like Frida Thompson can cause an awful lot of trouble between two good friends like us. Now, do we all understand Mrs. Hoover's instructions? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We each have a candidate to check on. We're to check with faculty members as to grade and personality qualifications. And, and then we make a report on these things, bring the reports back, and draw up a final slate of the girls based on our findings. Can we go now? Just a minute. Yes, Mary? I don't think it's fair to ask Laura to check on Jean, since they're best friends and all. Well, I'm sure Laura will be objective about it, Mary. Oh, yes, Mildred. I'm sure Laura will be objective about it as objective as she can be. Well, how could she help it? We all know pretty well what Jean's qualifications will be. Well, sure. I'm just saying I think it'll look funny for Laura to check on her best friend. Are you saying that or is Frida Thompson saying it? What do you mean OK, by hold it, hold it. The assignments have been made and that's that. Now, there's one more thing on Mrs. Hoover's instructions. Then can we go? Yes, then you can go. Here it is. Remember, girls, we have to do a lot of talking about people in this office. Because of this fact, everything talked about in this office must stay in this office. Okay? Sure. That's it for now. Hi, Frida. Do you still go steady with Jim? Why, yes. Does your best friend go steady with him, too. What do you mean? Look. 
Oh, Frida, he's just taking her home. Why isn't he waiting for you? Well, I, I told him not to because of the meeting. Well, when the cat's away, the mice will. Bye now. Why isn't he waiting for you? Let's not jump to conclusions. Let's always get the facts. Yes, Laura, I think Jean would be a good choice for Pep Club president. Jean. Hello, oh. Mrs. Anderson. Hi, Jean. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jean. Here are the tests, all done. Would you like me to put them in the drawer for third hour? No, just set them on top of the file. I'd like to check them over, please. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Summers would like to see you in the office when you're through here. All right. Thank you. I'll see you thank both you later. Thank you, Bye-bye. How she can make up so many different questions year after year, I'll never know. Jean. Oh, Larry. What? Come, Come here, Miss oh, Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Oh, Anderson. Oh, what can I do for you, cutie? You're in Mrs. Anderson's third hour class, aren't you? Don't I look like it? I've been up most of the night studying for that quiz of hers. Well, there's some things I'd like to talk to you about. Oh, well, we have a few minutes now before class starts. Oh. Mrs. Anderson handed back our test papers this morning, and our boy Larry here got an A. So what? So you must have talked to the girl who mimeographed the test. Jean Brownie mimeographed him. Helpful, wasn't she? Jean and I were talking the other day in Mrs. Anderson's room about the party we were going to do. Got answers to me. Oh, what color? Big news, big Why? news. Guess who I saw exchanging notes in study hall? I know, teacher. Jim O'Donnell and Jean Brownlee. But I thought Jim was going steady with Laura. That's exactly what makes this big news. Oh, Frida, don't be silly. Exchanging notes doesn't mean a thing. Well, I'm just telling you what I saw, and seeing's believing. Not always. Well, just yesterday after the meeting, then I... Well, why didn't somebody tell me? I did. I was... I think that Jean Brownlee doesn't deserve to be nominated for president. Well, Laura, you're Jean's best friend, and you wouldn't be bringing in just plain gossip about her. But somehow it just doesn't seem like Jean did help people cheat on a quiz. Oh, I don't know. She makes pretty high grades for someone who has so many outside activities. She's smart, that's why. Sure she's smart, but she's also human. Besides, this thing's all over school now. Is that true? Have the rest of you heard about this? Yes, yes. yes. Rita Thompson saw Jean carrying test papers in the Miss Anderson's room. Oh, well. What do you mean by, oh, well? Just that sometimes Frida sees more than there is to see. Jean's best friend saw her with the test papers, too. Didn't you, Laura? Yes. Larry Smith wasn't the only poor student to make an A on that test. There was Jean Miller and Frank Horton. Well, I'm getting all right, all right, all right. This is getting a little messy. We probably ought to talk to Mrs. Hoover about it. Why can't we take care of it? Look, Mildred, we all like Jean. But let's admit it, this thing's all over school. If we put Jean's name on the slate now, Every girl in the pep club would be screaming about it. Oh, yeah. No, they would. Sure. I agree. Yeah. And I move we drop Jean Brownlee's name from the slate. I How agree. about yeah. Cynthia Smith? Oh, Cynthia. 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 All right, all right. Yeah. You win. We'll put Cynthia's name on the ballot and scratch Jean's off. Good. But don't forget what Mrs. Hoover said. Everything that's said in this office stays in this office. Now, Jean will probably feel real bad that she's not on the ballot anyway. So let's not make it any worse. All right, now about the other officers. Yeah, sure, really. Let's go to class, Mom. Hi. Say, thanks for helping me with this gift, Jean. Hey, what's the matter? Your name won't fade off. Cynthia Smith will all be. Oh, look, Jean, it's only an office. Why, 20 years from today, you won't even remember it. I'll remember it all right. Because it's my best friend's birthday. See you later, Jim. Bye. Oh, 
Golly, Gina, I'm sorry about your not getting on the pep club slate. Everyone who's up there will do a fine job, I'm sure. Jean, there's something I want to tell you, for your own good. Now, I can't tell you who told me, but, well, I know why you didn't get on the pep club ballot. You see, when Laura came into the meeting the other day, it came up about that cheating on the tests in Miss Anderson's room. And, well, you mimeographed the tests, and Laura saw you talking to Larry Smith that afternoon. And I don't understand. It's not true. None of it's true. Laura, you know I wouldn't do a thing like that. Why didn't you come and ask me about it? We, we weren't supposed to talk about it outside the meeting. You weren't. I don't understand. I thought we were always going to get the facts before we jumped to conclusions. I, I thought I had the facts. But you didn't. You didn't. Jean, you're making it worse than it really is. No, I'm not. It's a big lie. You can live it down. Why? Why do I have to live it down? Why do I have to live down a big lie? Laura, who started it? Tell me, who started it? I... I can't. Why? I... <laughs> She's still upset about that pep club deal? I guess. Women. Oh, well. Say, happy birthday. Here, take it. Why, thank you, Jim, but I thought you'd forgotten. Why should I forget? I don't... Oh, Jim. A friendship bracelet. How did you know I wanted one? Your best friend told me. Oh? Yeah, boy, that jean's a swell gal. You know how I hate to shop for things for girls. The clerks look at you so funny and everything. Well, Jean did all the shopping while I drove her around. She even wrapped it for me last night. And oh, you know what else she did? She heard about Mrs. Anderson leaving next year, and she and Larry Smith and some of the other kids are arranging a farewell party for her. And oh, and did you hear the lowdown on the good grades in Mrs. Anderson's third hour class? Seems Tom Gunnison found a copy of the test in the mimeograph room and started circulating it. Hey, what's wrong with you? Look, if that was a dirty deal about Jean's not getting on the pep ballot, just tell me. Laura, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Go away. No, nothing was wrong except that everything was wrong. Can Laura do anything to help Jean now that she's sorted the facts from the gossip? How can you tell the difference between fact and gossip? What do you think? <laughs>